Now welcome to another edition of News from Naboo with Thor's Lightning Takes. And let's get right to the news. Alright, I found some interesting news about the Mandalorian. We had a problem with this last season. I think a lot a of people problem? had, okay, a plethora of problems with season three. Okay. One of which, the top one I think we heard, was whose show is this? Whose show is it anyway? Well, the Mandalorian can refer to anybody, right? So it's Bo's show now. It's the Bo-Katan Mandalorian special is what everyone was saying. Because that's yeah, kind of what it felt did like. kind of hijack the main character slot. Not that Din was completely off the table, but he didn't have much of a, a that, story in season not three. Not that Din's hijacked anyone else's show. Well, I, I guess it's only <laughs> fitting, right? He did kind of take Boba's yeah. show for a couple episodes. All the best ones. And did it better, too. <laughs> yeah. But we now have an interview with Katie Sackoff coming out of the direct, where she kind of undresses some of the speculation surrounding Bo-Katan. There was a long pause there between the undressing part. All right, whatever. Obviously, she's heard the same things everyone else has, that she was replacing Din Djarin as the show's main character because of the screen time, obviously. And that the storylines were all kind of moving towards her when they were converging, which we all thought, yeah, eventually these different little plot threads are going to converge into one main story. We just didn't know it was going to be Bo's story. It's interesting that she uh, reads and responds to the uh, criticism. Well, that's because she loves her character. No, 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 no. That's not a that's not a criticism. No, that's, that's actually it's nice to see that because a lot of times you hear nothing from mm -hmm. them, which is, I mean, I guess to a degree you expect it because they probably get a lot of criticism and you don't mm -hmm. want to get into a, a war online with your critics necessarily. But it, it's kind of nice to see someone respond like that. I respect and appreciate that. <laughs> She kind of said she wants to be clear with fans that The Mandalorian is still very much Din Djarin's show. She commented, No, I think there's always going to be a lot of speculation in this fandom. You know, I think it's one of the reasons why people love this fandom so much, and they love this universe so much that a lot of times it allows just enough ambiguity for people to interpret things the way they want to interpret them. And out of that, there is the ability to have a lot of misinformation get out, or just, you know, wishful thinking. And I think... In this situation, I think that the story of the Mandalorians and the story of Bo-Katan needed to be told. I don't believe in any way that it was taking away from Din's story, nor that it was ever the intention. And you know, Pedro and I aren't in charge of who gets to lead the show. And that's when she laughed. This is Din Djarin's show. It will always be Din Djarin's show. Well, she's right about that. Mm -hmm. You can never... Well, not never. I'm sure there are circumstances where you can, but... You almost never blame the actors for the story, right? Right. They don't write it. I mean, if their character starts shining, the writers might take notice of that and then give them a bigger part. Yeah. You but, may react yeah. to the fans if the fans are like really like, oh, bo is great, and then we're all like, why can't we get more? And then you give mm -hmm. them that. That's mm -hmm. one thing. But I think there was a, a lot of people kind of caught by surprise, especially those who don't know the character. Right. You may have watched the first two seasons, like, oh, Din Grogu, I love this dynamic, mm -hmm. I love these two characters. Wait a second, who's this now? Yeah, they had her kind of come in as a side character, and then all of a sudden, yeah. boom, she was the character. Yeah, she really was in season three. And mm -hmm. that doesn't mean it was a bad story of hers, necessarily. Mm -hmm. It just means you got a lot of people who, again, you don't understand why this is happening. As she kind of points out, it, it is good to get the bigger story of the Mandalorians, right? Right. It's not a bad thing that happened. We wanted to know what happened to them, why they were so fractured, how they might possibly come together yeah. again, because their sect was so different than the Mandalorians we knew from the Clone Wars. Yeah, independent of how well executed you thought the season was, it was something that should have been told, I guess, because mm -hmm. we do have that plot thread hanging for a while about what happens to the Mandalorians, which has kind of been going from Clone Wars into Rebels, and you know, even into Ahsoka with Sabine, you're kind of wanting to know what is the deal with her parents and how they died and all these things, too. Right, and it was important to hear that in The Mandalorian about the Night of a Thousand Tears yeah. to better understand who she is. Yeah. I think it shows, once again, how great Katie Sackhoff is, that she addressed the rumors, she addressed the complaints in her own way by, you know, like a professional, coming out and saying, you know what, this is his show, this is Din's show, Din is the star of the show, he will continue to be the star of the show, we don't write it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a good, very diplomatic and appreciated answer. 
Right. I'm, I'm glad to hear that now that the actors are allowed to speak again, <laughs> that we can get some of this addressing some of these concerns that have been building throughout the fandom. Because yeah. we've had no directors doing interviews. We've had no cast actors doing interviews to fill us in on these things that we've had questions of. So we're kind of getting speculation off the rails. I, I feel like they're losing out by not really addressing fans. And, que- and not, I'm not even just talking about like, oh, the overly negative fans. Mm-hmm. Just certain questions. You know, right. to have a more open line of dialogue with your fandom. I think that's a big problem when we watched Ahsoka and we could hear nothing from any of the actors. There were questions that we had along the way. Yeah, a lot of them. That a lot of times directors and stuff will answer those questions for you. They won't just let you speculate when we're all criticizing any of the choices that Thrawn made in the show. Maybe if Dave Filoni or they would have let Lars Mikkelsen or somebody talk about their character within the show, we would understand the choices. Yeah, maybe. Probably maybe, not. Maybe, but, but we'd have something yeah. to go on rather than random fan speculation. Yeah, all I'm saying is there are a lot of opportunities to kind of, you know, a fan has complaints to come out and even just acknowledge the complaint, even just acknowledge you mm-hmm. understand why they were disappointed. I think that's been a big, big problem in this fandom is you just, you know, obviously we have, a split that happened during the sequels and you just never address that other side. You never like come out and say, and again, it, Disney is a company that's not going to necessarily want to acknowledge their failures or their mistakes, but you had this whole side of the fandom where if you just would have addressed them in a civilized professional manner, maybe we don't have the problems we do today. I, I agree with you hundred percent. I do expect that we will continue to see more of Katie Sackhoff as Bo-Katan and Mandalorian. Maybe as those narratives continue to merge or expand, I mean, they are going to have to bring in the Mandalverse, and I honestly believe that your big fighting force is going to be the Mandalorians. I think that's why we united them. I think that's why we're getting to know them as a people, as a warrior tribe, and giving them plenty of grievances against the war dog remnants of the Empire, because I think they are going to be a big part in this movie. Yeah, as long as they don't like show up at the end to save the day, that kind of cliche, like, <laughs> oh, we're outnumbered, there's no way we're winning now, and then here are the Mandalorians. But what's interesting is seeing more of Din's story. Where is he going to go from here for the next season? Because it does look like it left them at a little bit of a pause point where he gets to kind of go and raise his foundling son now. <laughs> I think he's working for the New Republic. Him and Carson are... Pals now. Rangers together. I think he's going to be taking kind of more like covert missions for the New Republic, which would have been perfect to bring in a character like Cara Dune as well. He could have mm-hmm. had like crossovers between Rangers of the New well, Republic. He could with be her the being one a... who is discovering and tracking well, sure. what Thrawn is up to. I, I just feel like there was a trajectory, you know, having the Rangers of the New Republic with Cara Dune, and then now Mando, where he ends in season three working for the New Republic. I felt like these were going to kind of interweave and intertwine mm-hmm. and. Obviously, that's not happening anymore with Kara. <laughs> yeah. So it looks like the the whole weight of uh, the New Republic stuff will be on Din's shoulders for now. Unless we get a new show announced. Right. And I don't think we're going to get a new show announced for a little while. No, I, I don't think so I think either. there's a couple other announcements they're behind about right now. Yeah, I, I think... think they... I think Thanksgiving. I think this one we're going to get a Skeleton Crew trailer. That is my prediction. It's a good prediction. I think it's going to be soon. Because why not put it on during the parade or when families are getting together? If this is meant to be a family show, you need to start your advertising... Why not do it right now? Then they can put the trailer on in front of Wish, that Disney show oh, movie thing that's sure. coming out yeah. there. Whatever. That's what I think. That's what I'm hoping for anyway. No, I don't think you want to leave people hanging for too long. You no, always Marvel's want them looking... came out guns blazing. No, you're right. You always want them to look forward to what's next, right? Marvel I mean... immediately was like, hey, here's Echo. We're going to give you this really like dark, awesome kind of looking trailer to get you amped into this. Oh, and we're also throwing What If out there for you, volume two. But on to something else that Disney is up to. They just, on the Lucasfilm YouTube page, they made a little exclusive clip that shows Indiana Jones fans kind of sharing their passion. Some really cool cosplay-type outfits. I didn't know that uh, Indiana Jones fans got together like miniature 501st, I guess. <laughs> I'm, it doesn't surprise me. <laughs> no, I mean, Indiana Jones is a fantastic character. No, he's... The OG, you know, of course Jones, he is, yeah. Of course. But, no, the, these are the kind of things, and not even necessarily this, but like I, it kind of goes with what I was saying. Like I, I just feel like there is a, a disconnect between the fandom and the, and Disney and Lucasfilm. Mm-hmm. You know, yes, they do they cater to the super hardcore fan who loves everything they do. Sure, but that's not your entire fandom. Not entirely. But the reason they were showing this Indiana Jones passion highlight clip thingy is because Indiana Jones in the Dial of Destiny is coming to Disney Plus on December 1st. It will be coming to the Blu-ray, the HK, 
the 4K. <laughs> the HK 4K <laughs> edition, yes. Yeah, on December 5th. There's also going to be a new documentary called Timeless Heroes, Indiana Jones, and Harrison Ford that's coming out on December 1st. That I'm actually very interested in. Yeah. No, I'm, I love Indiana Jones. Mm-hmm. So, I'm, yeah, if you're available, I guess, on December 1st and you haven't watched the Dial of Destiny, you can watch that. Or you can watch a documentary about Indiana Jones and Harrison Ford, which I'm really hoping really delves into some of the work that was done on the original three films. Well, I, I hope so. I don't know that people are... No, we dying don't, to see the I don't need to behind kind of the scenes into. of Dial of Destiny and Crystal Skull. Yeah. I want to see some of the OG Indiana Jones. Yeah. All right. Well, that is going to be all we got for you this time. Now it is your turn. Take to the comments below. Tell us what you think of any and all of today's news or anything we discussed in relation to the news. And let's talk some Star Wars or some Indiana Jones, of course. And until next time, thanks for watching. <laughs>